Hey, everybody. This is Keith Hancock alongside my partner, confidant and pal, Christine DeVita. And welcome back to another episode of Behind the Counter. Good evening, Christine. How are you today? Good, Keith. How are you? Good. Very excited to be here tonight. We have a great guest with us, Crescent Torres, a little bit down the line, um, the food vlogger, but we'll get into him after our update on current events. Um, Christine, we, I know we were talking about some great articles this week, how, you know, Burger King raising its prices to offset costs and also Chipotle overcoming staffing issues, uh, really pertaining to a lot of the things that we've been going back and forth about on here since we kicked off season two of Behind the Counter. You know, pr- pretty interesting reads in regards to those things. As inflation goes up, uh, Burger King, the parent company of RBI, expects more menu price increases in 2022 to offset labor costs and inflation. And remember, we were just talking about the whole throw the quarter here, yes. throw the 50 cent piece here. Yes. It's interesting to see. I guess the one thing that I'm, I wonder is, which I hate about inflation, is it's never going to go back down, you know? No. So we're, we're, raising the, the rate, we're raising the bar and raising the prices on these things. And um, the thing that I hate seeing when I see like Burger King or Popeye's, which is mentioned in the article and a lot of other places, is those are the affordable places to eat. They are. So we're taking away that value for, um, you know, the the, Amer- the average American family, basically. Absolutely. Um, who, who, who looks to those to have a cheap meal out with their kids once in a while, which which just concerns me about the overall direction of where we're going in regards to food cost. You know, big companies like Burger King. Um, McDonald's. McDonald's. Dunkin' Donuts, the big brands, they're they're kind of like our S and P five hundred, like on the stock market, you know. So where they go, they're good trends to follow. Starbucks and things like that. Retail, Walmart, I think is great. I enjoy tracking Walmart because they always seem to set the tone. They kind of always lead in certain business models, and other people will kind of follow their strategy. But interesting, Burger King ended the quarter with a net increase of three point three percent. They did, they did, and. You know, for a quick serve restaurant, that's kind of that's that's a lot because typically I know they fall around a one point five to two percent if they do raise prices at all. And companies like Burger King, I know, want to go or try to stray away from price increases. Um, but they also did see a re- an increase in their sales at eleven point three percent. So. Some of that is could be organic, but you and I both know the true measure of a restaurant isn't necessarily always sales, but it's more headcounts walking through the door. I agree a thousand percent. It definitely is. It definitely is. But with inflation coming right now, a lot of these uh, quick serve chains like Burger King and McDonald's definitely going to see a, a price increase uh, well mm-hmm. in 2022. Well, we're going to see what's going to happen. I mean, it's it's it was bound to happen sooner or later. I mean, we all know what's been going on with, uh, you know, cost of goods uh, right. all around and uh, the significant increase um, in buying. So, you know, I'm curious to see where these guys end up. Yeah. Dollar General is raising their prices. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh wait, if, that's right. The dollar did, store. Did you hear about that? Yeah. The dollar store. <laughs> I'm like, did I, I, I was thinking about that. I was going to talk to you. Maybe we should become sign people. Do they have to change all their signs now? I think they do. False yeah, it's, it's right? no like, longer the dollar I, I, store, man. <laughs> yeah. I want, I want that sign contract to start replacing the dollar general signs. I can't. And then, oh my, my gosh. Where am I going to buy all my cleaning supplies now for it? That's where I buy like all my cleaning stuff at the dollar store. I do the same thing. Because you can't beat it. It's great. It's now, great. Now we're screwed. That's I'm it. not going there paying no dollar f and twenty five. All right. No. For my no. No. Because that's a twenty five percent increase. That is. Which is that's bad. Which is way against the industry that's... average. Well, I, enough on that. I, still I think, think we, we could afford it, Keith. The dollar twenty five. You know. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't. Really got to pinch these pennies today. <laughs> these days. And with. Don't even want to tell you what a, what having my hot water heater service just cost. Anyway, oh, enough with man. that. We've beat this dead horse. <laughs> but uh, let me tell you something. Chipotle, what, in 2020 or 20, 2021, they were utilizing TikTok, remember, to leverage oh, yeah. their hiring power for their hourly employees. Uh, right. and, I think, and I think some salaried positions as well. So they were utilizing TikTok to do video interviews on why they should work for Chipotle. And let me tell you something. I thought it was the the, the best idea I've ever, I've ever seen with regards to hiring. Um, you know, a lot of companies now, um, 
obviously with, um, you know, current events and whatnot, you know, showcase your authentic self, right. And what better way to do it than social media. And I think that's amazing. So they had a, a tough year, right. Chipotle with staffing challenges. They utilize TikTok to leverage it. And I think also yeah. Instagram as well. Um, but they are making some significant investments, stabilize the chain's labor force, uh, which will help support um, accelerated plans for growth. And Chipotle is by far my favorite concept, right? Because they have been through their ups and downs. We've seen them in the news. I think it was 2018, 2019. They just had some devastating- Yeah, what the hell happened to them? They got, they killed people. No, they killed people. I take that back. They got people sick or something. They had the holy E. coli breakout. Oh, yes, um, the E. coli. And they were navigating that. And let me tell you something. They have one hell of a marketing and PR group to get them out of that because I don't think any chain could survive what they went through uh, with the E. coli breakout. And it didn't happen no. once. It happened a handful of times. Um, no. And I think then their CEO got busted and thrown in jail for dealing coke. Yes. I so yeah. So that was uh, that was Chipotle. But let me tell you something. It's it's the little engine that could. I'm very proud of them. I think they've done a hell of a job uh, with getting themselves um, out of the uh, you know the black cloud, um, and they put some really great systems and procedures into place to safeguard their concept and their individual locations. They even did some drastic measures as shut down their their locations back in 2018. I think for a two hour company wide call on training and development of all the back of the house procedures. So, you know, kudos to them. And I think that this labor issue that they're having, they'll dig themselves out of it better than I think anybody will. So I'm a big fan of all day. They always seem to be able to dig themselves out. And then there's things that happen on a more micro scale that you don't even hear about. One I can speak to with Chipotle is they got hammered by New York City last year for not being in compliance with the Fair Work Group labor laws. Yes. And that's in court now. And I mean, we're talking in the millions of dollars that, that they're battling over. Yeah. The thing that I think is funny is from what I know internally, and I won't say, but I've, I've, I've heard who the, the restaurant grapevine that they were just basically like, we're not following the law. I mean, obviously, it, it, it's on some levels. Now, I don't want to be quoted on that because I don't know, you know, how true that is. Right. It's just a state that's hearsay bullshit and who really knows. But, but um, you know, but I'll, I'll give them credit if they did, because that law is very tough for operators. And, and like I've mentioned before, it's very in certain cities. It can be not just New York. They make it very hard to do business sometimes. Yeah. And yet they want to attract business. So if that was where to take a stand, kudos to them. But on the flip side, we'll see how it goes. I've been following that just out of my own curiosity to see what the court rules on that, because that could be a groundbreaking case in regards to something in our favor, trying to get away, because it's really lopsided, the fair work with labor laws in New York City. Yeah. I mean, I remember when they came out when I was with Ann Pizza and LPQ. It was, uh, to navigate that was, uh, was one hell of a ride. But Chipotle, back in December... They unveiled plans for its first digital prototype restaurant with drive through and walk-up pickup window. Um, so I follow them all the time. I mean, they're constantly in the news with new and different ways that they were going to leverage their concept. But digital sales remain a key focus for the brand, right? In October, uh, the CEO, Brian Nichols, said year-to-date digital sales were close to $2.7 billion. At that point, nearing wow. 2.8 billion in digital sales during 2020, obviously because of COVID, right? But yeah, I'm curious to see how that's gonna how that's gonna work out for them. But they're they're doing pretty well. I mean, if they navigate that whole labor piece, you know, they'll come out a winner. So you know, good for them. Yeah, good for them. That's good. Those digital kitchens, I don't even think you can ever walk inside of them. I think they're just four walls, a box. That's a kitchen. Yeah, that's, that's it. Designed for pickup. That's pretty. That's it. We'll see how that goes. You know, everybody's jumping on different models. Your place in the city, we were uh, Serafina, which you oh, mentioned to me. It's my favorite place. Is opening up the quick serve model. Yes, I love you know, Serafina. I have. I hope they do well because Serafina does a good job, especially for a multi-unit Italian chain. They do, and, and however, we were just talking about Italian food, right? So I will say this: out of a handful of places that I will go and eat Italian food, Serafina is one of them. Love it, absolutely love it. It's I very think good. I think we went there. Us during Pret, we might have. We, we went there we during did. our Pret days, I believe. I have very vague recollection of sitting outside, but there was probably a lot of 
alcohol involved too. So yeah, there was. Quite remember. Yeah. But Serafina, so they're doing the quick serve model. You know, I wish them the best. I'm always a little leery of the Italian quick serve model because that's the one thing that we've had quick serve around forever. Pizzerias is essentially Italian quick serve, you know, so it's a harder market to buy. Yeah. But it might work in the city. You know, there wasn't there wasn't Chipotle's around on every corner since 1950 or whatever. That is true. That is true. But uh, so, next, but I, I wish in... them the best because they do a great job. They do. And their food is phenomenal. Great I enjoy. Food. I've never had, and their service is always on point. Yes, and they have an amazing happy hour and bar. But mm-hmm. that's it for me. Plug in Serafina. There we go. Make sure they cut those royal. No, no. <laughs> hook me up with a comp. I'll be happy. <laughs> I was. I was going to say at least a free Galamad when we go. <laughs> Buy me a drink. I'll plug you every episode. So, uh, <laughs> so why don't you tell our listeners who we have queued up right now? So we have Creskin Torres, the rideshare foodie. Hey, Creskin, how are you? I'm awesome, Sauce. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Really, really great to have you on the podcast, and we appreciate you carving out the time and being with us tonight. I've, Thank you very much for having me. You know, we haven't had too much dialogue between each other outside of emails, but I've had the pleasure of going on your Instagram and looking at different things that you're doing. I appreciate it. I guess if you wouldn't mind opening up, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, I'll, g- I'll give it to you for a quick intro. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, so my name is uh, Creskin J. Torres um, from Baltimore, Maryland, born and raised. And uh, about five years ago, um, I decided to uh, take an adventure through America to uh, meet the people of America um, to experience something I've been having a dream of uh, for the Pretty much all my life as a kid so very adventurous um i'm a huge fan of westerns uh, i love a lot of 80s and 90s you know films uh i love to cook um i'm an all-around great guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. love to have fun so just a little bit about me so what inspires you to do what you do you know um i just saw a lot of uh assumptions well experience people with a lot of assumptions and um i mean me personally i just like to experience things for myself so i just wanted to see exactly what america was all about and um you know come up with my own uh opinion or form my own opinion and um you know i wanted to experience other people's cultures and uh pretty much find out what they go through or uh what their perspectives are on america and it's been an awesome journey so where have you nice. been so far? Like, take us take us on your journeys. Where have you been? Give us a a, a preview. Uh, so I've been to 49 states. Um, my first, my actual, I started in 2018. Um, this is way before the pandemic um, because there's some people that assume that I started because of the pandemic. Um, so I started 2018. I actually left on Super Bowl Sunday oh, wow. specifically. Uh, and my first road trip, yeah, <laughs> my first road trip was actually to the West Coast because I had never been to uh, California. So I set out west, and um, I realized that you could use Uber, uh, you know, in other states, other markets. So I just was like, to me personally, I was just it made sense to use Uber to fund my road trip, and you know, just camp out in my car along the way, and you know, uh, pick up the best eats on the way, and you know, talk about it. Tell people where to go. So that's that's kind of how it started. I didn't know it was going to blow up, but <laughs> <laughs> that's how it how definitely started. blew up. You're everywhere. Yeah. You're on Instagram. You're on Facebook, and you're on TikTok. I follow you on TikTok and Instagram, just so you know. <laughs> I, I actually got to. Uh, I actually got to. Uh, um, Ryan Seacrest hit me up when I was in Hollywood. I was on a Ryan uh, Seacrest morning show. That's awesome. He interviewed. That is awesome. awesome. You have a lot yeah. of amazing press around yeah. what you do, and I'm, I'm excited to continue to talk to you about it. So. Give us give us an idea of what what type of places do you hit to try out food? It, do you have an agenda, or you just go out and just if you pass something that looks good, how um, does it work? Yeah, a, a kind of a mix of both. Um, like specifically now, I like going to, like I've, I like going to big like you know the known cities. But my my whole goal was to experience okay, what are these other cities and towns around surrounding the markets we all know. So, like I was saying before, like you say, like, uh, you know, California, if, usually on the East Coast, if you go into or flying for vacation to California, when you say Cali, that just means L.A. usually. Right. Doesn't mean Fresno, San Jose, you know, like the San Francisco, you know, it's usually right. I want to go to L.A. 
And I'm like, well, out there, I'm like, what's going on in Rancho Cucamonga? <laughs> you know, I found about, you know, like a small place like that. I'm like, that sounds made up. Like, is that a real place? You know, what's going on in Fresno? What did they do in Fresno? Sacramento, which I didn't know was the capital of California. I'm th- I thought the capital was like San Jose. Mm-hmm. So you get to Sacramento and you find these, you know, this information. No, it's very educational. Right. And that's what I wanted to do is educate myself on the country, you know. So that's typically what I look for. Um, but specifically now is I want to just find random towns and just pop up. Okay. And then show love and support local business there. And, you know, and people love it because you're taking an interest in where they live. Okay. Excellent. So take me, talk to me about organic food. Like, how do you feel about organic food versus the norm when you go to, when you, when you go to, um, to, I guess, rate a place or, or, or try it out and check it out. What's your take on our, cause organic food is so, it's so talked about now it's in everybody's diets, right? Is organic when you can type of thing. So talk to me some about, about organic food. The girl that just cut and dyed my hair was all, that's all she talked yeah. about. Oh yeah. I mean, it's everywhere. It I can't go to a restaurant out so- something beyond organic. And I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> so my first thing is, um, like, how do you, you know, like I ask the question, like usually, cause if I have a server and I, they say, you know, something's organic or whatever I ask, you know, so how do you know, or what, you know, what makes it organic? You know, cause I think some people just like saying certain things and me personally, I like, I like actually going to a farm where they actually grow this stuff, you know, you know, it's organic. I like doing a lot of that. Um, but if I do go to a restaurant, I ask questions, I, do, I ask a lot of questions, you okay. know, and typically a lot of people don't even know, you know, they'll tell you I have to go find out from someone else. Um, but usually I like to find out if I go to a restaurant, if they do have something organic, what farm is it coming from? Okay. You see what I'm saying? A lot of people don't think about, you know, like that kind of stuff. And it's interesting because people will ask me, they'll, you know, they'll ask me like, why do you ask that? Or what is, you know, what kind of question is that? Or why do you want to know that? You know, that's a little too much information. Right. Yeah. Why wouldn't you want to know where your food is coming from? Got it. It definitely makes people in the yeah. industry when when there's too many questions feel suspicious. You know, like who's this mm-hmm. guy? Is it people? Is it a health inspector? Is it this some kind of inspector? That's what everyone's <laughs> always keeps everyone on their toes. So because typically people don't ask. Yeah, I ask questions. Can you give us your top five places that you've thoroughly enjoyed that were your favorite? I just say state: uh, Mississippi, uh, Kansas, uh, New Mexico. We got Alaska, Montana, um, South Dakota. I think that's like six, right? <laughs> Vermont. I mean, I like, it's a lot of places I like for different reasons, but it's it's really, really incredible places. Out here. Was it the atmosphere or was it the food in those places specific to, places? The, the food, the people. Um, and what, what I want people to realize is that a lot of these places that you people wouldn't normally stop or they would try to go through uh, or fly over states – these are the these are the places where you get the most welcome and people want you to come in versus like there's some people that feel like they like people don't want them there if that makes any sense and it's it's usually the complete opposite they want to meet people they want to see what what it's like somewhere else or what how someone else lives which i think is one of the problems in the country yeah yeah for sure i totally agree i definitely agree a hundred percent i found some of my some of my best places layovers in like random cities when I was flying, um, or driving through, um, just stop and I'll do go to like a local place and it's the best food I've ever had in my entire life. Some people are skeptical, but exactly it, it beats going to a chain because we're all tried, tired of chain restaurants, right? There's nothing better than someone's mm. authentic cooking, um, their own recipes. And when mm. they open up their own place and also it helps support small businesses. Um, mm. exactly. Yeah. So that's been awesome. And just being able to, you know, like, it's a great thing to, to utilize, you know, the technology we have and being able to be um, work remote with like Uber or like Lyft, Rideshare, whatever, because I actually get to, you know, when I'm picking past the passengers up in these small towns and everything, I'm actually getting, you know, getting to talk to these people and they're meeting someone that's not from there. They're like, you know, what are you randomly doing here in West Virginia? Like, <laughs> you know, who comes to West Virginia? <laughs> And it's uh, which to be, uh, I will be honestly, I will tell you this. I thought West Virginia, when I first heard of it, 
I thought it was actually a part of Virginia. Like I thought it was like just a West end of Virginia. I didn't know it was a state. Like I did not know. Like it's own little country, <laughs> West Virginia. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. I did not know. Yeah. I never knew. So, you know, so you go to, you know, so, you know, you go to these places and you find out so much, um, you learn so much about it and about the people and the communities there, you know, and how everyone helps each other out or with, you know, what they're dealing with there. Yeah. Um, so it, that's been incredible. And then being able to have lunch with like the different mayors, uh, the different uh, city councils or like police officers, mm-hmm. firefighters, you know, that's been awesome. So that's more of my thing now is like, you know, meeting with people, public servants, you know, to learn about their family and what, you know, what they like about that town. Yeah. So, yeah. So I have two more questions. I'm going to I'll let Keith take the rest of it. So after traveling and experience food service all across America, right? What advice yes. uh, would you give to a restaurant owner? Because when I go to certain places, like if somebody gives me um, six different burger places, my, my, automatically my question is like, do they have something unique? You got, try to have a unique dish that someone else doesn't have. And the other thing is, what are they doing with their burger? or their dish versus someone else's. You got to have something that, you know, separates you from everyone else. Right. Right. Absolutely. No, I agree. So if I just say tacos and somebody tell me tacos, I'm like, okay, what's the, you know, but if you tell me there's a place that is a four foot ta- taco <laughs> that they call a machete, that's where I'm going. I've never heard of a four foot long taco called a machete and it looks like a machete, you know, versus like, yeah, it's five other street taco places. No, I'm going for the machete, which was in Sacramento. <laughs> <laughs> what have you seen done right locally uh that should be a standard um across the globe customer service oh that's easy customer yeah. service you know when you walk in and you get that greeting yep and then, you know someone you know they are aware that you're there yeah customer service nice i agree that's the first thing percent. where where would you say you've seen it in the country better than other parts is it is it true that southern hospitality do you find it the south and places in the midwest but mm-hmm. definitely that was like my first state that i hit outside of my region mm-hmm. my first trip was mississippi okay and that was that was the standard shit so you get there and they have there they have a lot of restaurants that do uh community seating where you're sitting with other people kind of like a mess hall or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But you're sitting with other people you don't know. And then um, they will have it set up where the owner will actually come out and sit down and talk to each person to find out where you're from. That's great. They don't do that everywhere. They, yeah. They won't do that in the Northeast. Yeah, they don't do that. Yeah. They don't I go to Delaware anywhere. to so visit family. things like that, yeah. And the Walgreens person yeah, I got says, family thank you, and I'm blown away. <laughs> really? You yeah. Do, you you know? Know? It just blows me away. I'm just not even used to that. And it's just, I mean, it's just certain things that stand out. <laughs> How do restaurants reach you to come and visit them? How do they how do they entice you to come? Well, I mean, usually they'll just uh, reach they'll reach out to me by email or they'll just contact me personally. A lot of it is just like reaching out to me. Okay. Um, and I mean, here and there, they you know somebody might you know offer me dinner or something like that or dinner on them just because they want to meet me. And you know, usually the owner or the wife wants to sit down and have a conversation. Okay. You know, just of you know, my story and everything like that. Um, but most of it is just, you know, just reaching out, which is something that a lot of people don't do, but that's how I've been able to, you know, have so much success is just reaching out to people. And then sometimes they'll just reach out to me. So, um, email, uh, you know, I have my, I think I actually have my contact number on my Instagram. Um, but a lot of it is just email or my contact number, which I, I have personally. So that's my personal. What's number. your, uh, so what's your contact information for our listeners? Who are out there who own restaurants? Uh, email the ride share foodie at gmail.com. That's T H E R I D E S H A R E F O O D I E at gmail.com. Uh, my contact number 443 504 3714. Again, that's 443 504 3714. Nice. Kreskin, K R E S K I N. <laughs> awesome. Good stuff. Awesome. J E L L O. And one quick. I'm a big kid. Don't mind one, me. One, one quick one that I want to know um, before you. Uh, my, fav- my favorite dish. Your favorite dish and your favorite restaurant of all time. Confidence in our my favorite dish is chili and cinnamon rolls. Oh, wow. A bowl of chili and a cinnamon roll. I've heard of that before. I don't Keith know. probably know. Yeah, the Midwest. Yep. Uh, favorite restaurant of all time. Oh my gosh. Uh, 
Well, right now it's uh, 1693 Red Zone Grill, and that's in uh, Ridgeland, Mississippi. Okay. All right. This guy will literally make you, if he doesn't have it on a menu, he'll make you whatever you want. I've never been to a place like that. I think that's the best ever. I love places like that. I love places <laughs> yeah. like that. Like, would he what? go to the supermarket and buy stuff if he had to type thing? No, he will actually may, make it. If you want a peanut butter, a peanut butter, a fried peanut butter and jelly sandwich with uh, grilled shrimp, some Creole sauce, okay. crawfish. He's like, okay, no, I got you. And he'll make it in the kitchen. I've never been anywhere like that. I think that. that's amazing. I love stuff like that. <laughs> I love stuff like that. It's like going to the guy's house. That's all about the customer service piece, right? So mm-hmm. he he looks like, he looks just he looks just like Michael Vick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he looks just like that's what I call him. Like Mike, Vick. he used to play. Uh, he was a uh, QB at uh, Jackson State University. He looked just like Mike Vick. But yeah, he will hook you some food up. But I've never been nowhere like that where it's not on a menu and he'll just put it together for you. Treat your guests as if they were guests in your own home. Right. You know, and I'm mm-hmm. famous for that. I love exactly. that. I love that level of, exactly. of guest service. I think it's amazing. But um. Exactly. Right. Exactly. But that's the main thing. Customer service. Oh, I cannot stress that enough. What do you look specifically for in customer service? Like what, what do you consider great customer service? Um, someone who's uh, welcoming. It's nothing like someone who's welcoming, just like if you were, you know, a guest in someone's home, like you were saying before. Mm-hmm. And you feel like, you know, when you so in a place of business, you're, you know, like you're essentially a guest in someone's home. Like it's nothing like that feeling. Versus like you go somewhere and people do the opposite. You They act like they don't want you there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're, yeah. you're not going to really feel, feel like, you know, like I'm welcomed in this place and I want to sit down and I'm having a great experience. You want to have a great experience. Yeah, absolutely. And you want the person to come back, yep. you know. So even if you do mess up or there's an issue, the, I mean, at the end of the day, instead of going back and forth, the whole the whole goal is to get the customer to come back. You want the customer to come back. Even if something happens, is I know I'm going to come to this place and they're going to solve the problem. Even if something happens or I have the wrong meal, uh, they mess my checkup, they solve the problem. I love this place. That's great. That's great. My first time in Texas, when my brother had his, uh, had his first kid, I went, did the grocery shopping and I'm at the supermarket and they're begging my stuff, super polite. And I'm like, what is going on? Yeah. And I'm like, Am I getting like stalked? Like what? The guy followed me out to my car because I had like a a a a a cart full of groceries, and he comes up right Uh behind me. And right, I'm from New York, so right away I'm like, "What is going on?" Right? I'm like, I'm looking around my surroundings. I'm like, "What is this dude gonna do right now?" Right? (laughs) Very aware. And he's like, (laughs) and he's like this really sweet seventeen year old kid. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, is everything okay? I'm like, dude, did I not pay for something? Like, is there something under the cart? And he goes, yeah. no, I want to help you with your groceries. He's like, cause you have a full cart. And he yeah. legit just like piled everything into the trunk. And then New York, New York style, you go to tip the guy. And he's like, no, no, no. It's part of our job. It's part of our customer service. And I'm like, yeah. are you kidding me? I'm like, this is great. I love it here. I'm like, this is awesome, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you don't get that in New York at all. It's like that. <laughs> Yeah, and what I found out is like you go to certain places, and I, I say I say I use this term or you know terminology. It's very clickish, and you know like I guess because it's like like a Seattle, which is one of my least favorite cities, they have this thing the Seattle freeze. But you go, and people are like really standoffish, or you know you can't walk up to someone individually and talk to somebody. You have to get introduced to their group, right. their posse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. whereas or you could go to like somewhere in Idaho or Montana or something like that. And people just be like, hey, how you doing? Do you have a Facebook? Man, you want to sit down and have a bit? You know, <laughs> they're more outgoing. They are. So I, it's very interesting. I have family yeah. in the Midwest out, outside of St. Louis. And that's Holy, what they say. Yeah. They say it's like the 1950s Definitely. out there. Neighbors bring each other sugar, yeah. all that stuff. I was like, yeah, you don't get mm-hmm. that around these parts anymore. Yeah, you don't. And I'm a huge, like I said, I'm a huge Westerns fan. So I was one of the ones I'm watching Wagon Train or Bonanza or something. And I'm like, well, people really like let you stay at their house and they don't know you and feed you and clothe you. And then here I am going to these different places. People don't know me. I'm a stranger. And they're just like, hey, when you get in town, if you need a place to stay, you can stay here. If you need anything while you're in town, here's my number. You know, yeah. people that don't even know me. Have you still the same America? So have you ever had something so good at a particular place? that you would still go there and get it even if the service was bad? That's a really great question. That's a great question. Kind of like you ever hear the Soup Nazi Seinfeld on episode? Uh, a Seinfeld oh, I know. Episode? I know what you mean. Yeah, if like that service was bad. Actually, I have. Okay. 
Uh, well, I won't say it was so good that, we, but the food is good. I went back even though I had bad service. It was in Lolo's Chicken and Waffles in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Mm. Like the waitress, literally, I can't. I'm sitting there, and she took 15, 20 minutes to sit sit me down. I had to walk up to the exit, like, hey, mm-hmm. you know, do I got a seat myself? Was it busy? And she was like, well, you, you did you walk up to tell somebody that you need to be seated? Right. I was like. Isn't that your job? Like, I didn't know I had to walk up to somebody and tell them I needed to be seated. So she walks me back to my seat, mm-hmm. and then she slams the menu. She slams the menu on a table so hard that it slid across the table and knocked off the condiments. Oh, wow. And she tells me, have a nice day. Like, really rude. Have a nice day. And then walks away. Oof. But I still got my chicken and waffles. <laughs> There's a a legendary old school place in Jersey called the Belmont Tavern. Uh Still only takes cash to this day, but they do the chicken Mm -hmm. Savoy called Stretch's Chicken. I mean, it's if you Google it, there's even a Wikipedia about it. They do everything but kick you in the ass when you walk through the door, smack you across the face. But I'll go there every time and take the abuse to have this friggin' chicken and there's and there's eating and their eggplant. Yeah, yeah, but it's rare I do that. Yeah. There's a place in Massachusetts, Keith. I think we covered it last season in like episode three or four that the service is so horrible, but that's that's their concept. Oh, Root, dicks. It's like a theme. Yeah. Food yeah, that's servers, the theme. like just nasty. Yeah. The food is great. I bet so like that. Yeah. But they actually started to train to, them. Uh, yeah. Like how far really, to take it, give them good yeah, dialogue and yeah. how to properly break balls. <laughs> they could never open up one of those in New York oh, or New no, Jersey. No, in our the area. place would be burnt down. <laughs> <laughs> the place would, would be burnt work. down. There's a place in um there's a place in uh there's a place in Chicago called uh Wiener Circle that does that. And they actually like, Hey, what the F do you want? Hurry up and you know, and that's the theme, you know, and depending on what day you are, you're there. It's, it gets really hostile. Now, it was funny because one of the employees, as I was walking in, was punching in to work. She was walking next to me. She says, hey, how's it going or whatever. She walks in. So she punches in, changes her clothes, and now she's trying to, she's getting into character. Now, when she asked me what the hell did I want, you know, it was kind of hard right. to not laugh because I'm like, <laughs> you were just polite outside. How are you going to switch? <laughs> you know? But it, it was a really cool place, though. It was a really cool place. Have you ever... Um considered down the road that you might open up your own restaurant yes um actually i thought about it a lot um and people have actually offered me their recipes or their dishes oh wow really? um so i said i would do a restaurant for it and i was really thinking about it you know when they offered me their recipes it was just like give me and i was going i thought my concept would just be to give them you know like con- uh credit i would have like a photo of who they are or whatever where i got it from um but I will uh, have a taste of the states, a uh, dish from all 50 states. Um, so that's something, I w- a concept I was thinking about. But now I'm leaning more to it because everyone has a restaurant or does a restaurant. And I'm always trying to do something different than, you know, the norm. Uh, so I'm aiming for 2025, but we're working on a, a actual theme park. Oh, wow. Themed after America. That- you see what I'm saying? Like this, this, this generation's Disney World. I think that I thought that would be awesome to have mm-hmm. an amusement park that's themed after America. Since so many people want to experience, what is it like? like it. How did you like it? And that's everybody that I talked to. So I was like, what better way than to create something, create my experience and, you know, to share sure. with everybody I think else. that's amazing. So I think that would be awesome. Where will we see you next? I will be April. I'll be headed uh, to New Mexico. Oh, nice. Um, and uh, yeah, and there and then um, I don't know from there. Like, well, what we're planning to do next month, I'm actually launching my mobile app. So my focus is that okay. my mobile app is dropping and it's an app for local recommendations. It's called Rashia Fruity. And you also get paid for your recommendations. Right. Okay. Um, so after that, this summer, we're putting together a national food truck tour, Taste of the States pop up tour where I'm going to pick probably 10 cities and I'm going to take food trucks from each state or as many states as I can. And we're going to do a food truck tour. Oh, wow. To bring trying to bring the food to the people. You know, that's what I'm trying to figure out. How can I bring part of what I got to experience to people that can't? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they can get a little taste. You know, they can get a taste of what I got to experience on the road. So Nice. That's the next that's thing. Awesome. I've always wanted to do my own event, you know, so that's the next thing. Like my own, like, Comic-Con, but food. <laughs> that's awesome. That would be a great event. Yeah. A great event. Yeah. Keith, we're definitely going to so that. That's like the next thing. Absolutely. <laughs> Taste of the state. And that would be like my concept. You know, that would be my concept for 
you know, whatever theme park, whatever I move forward. October, I'm planning to do my last state, Hawaii. Uh, I'm planning to go October to uh, through December, and then okay. um, hopefully by next, hopefully by next summer, summer of next year, that'll be like the the tour. Um, so so we'll see. It depends on how everything goes with the mobile app, and then uh, we'll take it from there. All right, awesome, awesome. Um, so yeah, I have plans. I have plan. I have, I've always had phase one, phase two, like Marvel. I've always had a vision of where I was going to take it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, man, I could talk to you all night, but we are coming to the end. Man, I show, got you. Mm-hmm. We would love to have you on again sometime down the road if you, if you have definitely. interest. And um, yes, definitely want to stay in contact from this point moving forward. You've been an awesome guest. Really appreciate having you, man. Thank you so much. Christine, Ooh, you have anything? Definitely. Looking forward to that jersey. <laughs> oh, I, you have my contact. I will. I'll show you all the hot places yes. to go to. Yeah, man. I'm Most all of for it. I'm all for it. Yeah. I'm all for it. I can't <laughs> wait to have you over, man. So, guys, thank you for another wonderful episode, and thank you, Kreskin, uh, for joining us. Thank go you. check Gre- uh, Kreskin Torres out on Instagram and TikTok at the Rideshare Foodie. Please check us out on Instagram and TikTok. Subscribe to Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Until next time, we're out. Have a great week, guys.